So here at Alta, entrepreneurship is one of the, uh, the big themes that sort of cuts through all the six schools. And quite understandably, since we are the university, the focus is, is on entrepreneurship among young people, students. Oh, here we go again. Uh, my talk is about a very different uh, segment, but one that's actually gaining quite a bit of prominence um, among policymakers at national and also supranational levels. Um, uh, one reason I'm doing this talk is that I've actually done some policy work myself for the OECD and the European Commission around the topic of entrepreneurship in the aging population or more generally entrepreneurship and population aging. So let's start with a little bit of um, context. So population aging and the economy. So we've all heard in the news that the populations of uh, developed countries uh, are aging, uh, including Finland. Uh, in just 15 years, a quarter of, of our population will be aged 65 or more. And this has economic consequences, of which only some are listed here, just to name a few examples. Uh, companies are fearing that there will be shortages in labor supply, employees retire, and there are not enough employees to replace them. Increasing healthcare costs come hand in hand with the aging population, as does the increasing dependency ratio. This latter fancy term um, actually just means the, the ratio of people who are working and thus contributing to uh, society's costs vis-a-vis -vis people who are out of work, so retired or, or still in school, school or in, uh, in daycare. But that's not the whole story. The aging populations also mean uh, changes in the structure of consumer demand, and this does not only mean that the aging population needs more diverse health services and healthcare products. It also means that we will have more, uh, more and more people moving into retirement with wealth and health that will, uh, who are willing to consume, for example, say, tourism type of um, leisure services. But the focus today are the implications of the aging population on the quantity and quality of entrepreneurship or firms being uh, established in the economy. So let's move to the topic of senior entrepreneurship. This nowadays in policy refers to new businesses being started by individuals aged 50 or older. It's a bit of a controversial term. I mean, do you really perceive somebody who's aged 52 as a senior? You might, might not. I don't think there is a perfect term for this, but this is actually a term used by the OECD. So I think we are good to go with that. So why are policymakers interested in startups by older employees? There are many reasons, but maybe the two most prominent ones are the willingness to seek ways how to prolong working careers. And having people in late career move into self-employment is one way of, of doing that. We know that self-employed individuals tend to retire later than people in organizational employment. It's also a way of making more use of the substantial human and social capital, the skills, knowledge and networks that accumulate over over a lifetime career than, say, early retirement schemes or, or let alone pe let people uh, move directly from unemployment to retirement. The expectation that the number of such senior startups is going to increase should be a reason for policy um, alone to, to be concerned about, or not concerned necessarily, but pay attention to. So with the aging population, quite naturally, there will be more mature people with the actual knowledge and skills and even some wealth to invest into a new business. Also, there will be people who want to make self-employment a bridge between their lifetime career in an organization and full retirement. Say you are a um, hospital doctor, want to take it a little bit easier, not so many night calls in the later years, 
of your career, you maybe establish your own practice, which gives you full control of the number of hours you work, when you work, and that contributes to your work-life balance. But on the more negative side, uh, research points to older workers suffering from more limited career development opportunities in organizations. So supervisors thinking, well, this guy's going to retire in seven, eight years anyway, so should I really invest much more in their training, say? Or if you end up unemployed in your mid-50s, finding a new job might be more difficult than for your 35-year-old counterparts. So basically, self-employment might actually be your only option for resuming economic activity. <clears throat> and this is actually the, um, the main focus of, um, to my knowledge, the oldest initiative, the policy initiative to address this issue, which is the Prince's Initiative for Mature Enterprise in, uh, in the UK. The current situation, however, is that the rate of startups uh, among the over 50s is about half of that in the younger age cohort. And this is fairly consistent across the OECD. So, the next question is, why does entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial activity decline with age? Put it simply, you could think of the decision to start a business in terms of two sets of factors. Feasibility, so can I do it? And desirability, do I really want to? And in general terms, compared to younger people, for older people, starting a business is more feasible because they have more experience, more skills, more knowledge, perhaps also more wealth, but generally less desirable because there are reasons why older workers prefer wage labor to entrepreneurship. Why is that? So here we have to um, introduce a few terms. Uh, we can start by distinguishing between income from entrepreneurship and income from wage labor uh, through the concepts of risk and time. So you could think of wage labor as yielding non-risky income in the present. So basically, you know at least roughly how much you're going to earn and when your paycheck arrives. Whereas when you start a business, you don't really know how much you're going to earn in the first place, and you don't know when the business is up and running and you start earning enough to be able to pay your salaries. So it's uncertain or risky income in the future. And this gives rise uh, to the concept of opportunity cost of time. Opportunity cost is, is economic speak, and here it basically means that if you choose entrepreneurship, what is the value of what you lose by not having chosen wedged labor? So the cost of the alternative. And put it quite bluntly, by every year that we age, we have one le year less time left. Okay, not a very, very happy, happy way to look at things, but this is economics, hey? it's the sinister, sinister science, no, dismal science. So basically, an individual who's aged 35 has more time left to reap the benefits of entrepreneurship than a person who's 60 years old. Hence, the 60-year-old person values that risky future income from entrepreneurial activity at this day less than does a 35-year-old person because they have more time to wait for the business to grow and start yielding profits, maybe substantially higher levels of income than you could earn from comparable wedged employment. And this, uh, all of this comes from a theoretical paper by, uh, by my colleagues, uh, Moren Levesque and Maria Minniti, but econometric evidence actually backs this up. So the result of most studies that have looked into this point to um, a, a so-called inverse U-shaped effect of aging on, on entrepreneurship. And I'll try the, um, the Star Wars sword to show how it looks like. So if you imagine here, the vertical axis is the level of entrepreneurship. The horizontal axis is um, age. So the curve looks something like this. So it basically means 
that for younger people, starting a business is desirable, but they rarely do it because they don't still have the skills and the experience um, required to uh, successfully establish a company. I, I call it the entrepreneurial peak age around mid-30s to mid-40s, uh, when most business startups happen. So these people, for these people, it's still desirable to start a business. They're still sort of young enough to, to wait for the, the benefits of, um, of entrepreneurial income, but they've also accumulated enough experience for the business startup to be feasible. And then after roughly the age of 45, the uh, activity starts to decline again. But, um, well, in economics, there's always the, the on the other hand argument. That's why policymakers want one-handed economists, because they don't say on the other hand. So they just give a simple argument. Doesn't apply here. So, um, my colleagues and I uh, investigated that inverse U-shaped curve by uh, assuming that uh, it doesn't need to be like that. The level of entrepreneurship does not necessarily decline with age. It depends on the type of business that you want to start. Because not everybody wants to invest in a business, start a business with the aim of hiring employees, earning lots of money. But some people that we call in this study, the self-employers, just want to work for themselves. Maybe hire one or two employees, but keep it, keep it small. So basically we contrasted the people who want to invest in the business and who have a preference for risk, who also have a higher opportunity cost of time, to people who just want to work them for themselves, hence have a preference for a low risk business and also have a lower opportunity cost of time. We also included a third category called the reluctant entrepreneurs. This also pops up in the media every now and then, referring to people who are pushed into self-employment. So there are no other opportunities uh, on the labor market, so your only alternative to pick up economic activities to make yourself <coughs> self-employed. So. In contrast to, to the two other groups, these people don't really even have a preference for starting a business, so they're likely to, to avoid risks and start a low-profile low business in order to move back into wage labor as soon as some becomes available. And what we found, based on uh, data across the European Union, so if you look at the... Um, what we call the owner managers. So these are the people who want to invest in the business and hire employees and, and make it bigger. You find that inverse U shape here. So the level of entrepreneurial activity increases up until about the mid 40s and decreases thereafter. For the reluctance who don't want to start a business in the first place, age doesn't really matter. So if your only alternative to make a living is to start a business, doesn't matter if you're 55 or 35. The interesting bit here concerns the self-employers, so the people who just want to employ themselves. As you can see, the probability of them starting a business actually increases in the 50s and up until the, the early 60s. So the on the other hand argument is actually quite relevant here. So it's not just the quantity of businesses being established but simply older people in general tend to establish smaller firms. As a little uh, follow-up question to that, we asked um, whether it is age itself, or say being 55, that influences your entrepreneurial behavior, or is age actually a subjective construct, meaning that how you feel about your age is more relevant than what your age actually is. So we introduced a concept that we called uh, the subjective age bias, which basically means the difference between your, your chronological age and your felt age. So this variable is positive when you feel younger than you actually are. And lo and behold, for people from about mid-40s to the mid-50s, it's actually makes a difference. 
So they are more, if they feel younger than they actually are, they are more likely to engage in entrepreneurial behavior. So to wrap up with a, with a few conclusions, we found that this so-called senior entrepreneurship is not a marginal phenomenon. Actually, um, the business register in Finland shows that about 16-17% of all new startups are actually by people aged 50, 50 plus. But we also found, uh, and this is actually confirmed by uh, another Dutch uh, study, that uh, older entrepreneurs tend to establish smaller firms. So the benefits that you derive for society from this type of activity are more social than economic. Say, um, boosting your income on, for, the, for the oldest older entrepreneurs uh, on top of the pension might contribute to your uh, quality of life. Uh, finding employment, meaningful employment rather than unemployment contributes to, to quality of life. And actually this is um, a study that is working in progress with, with my colleagues and I, which is about the effects on quality of life. And our tentative evidence actually does point that moving from employment to, to self-employment in late career does enhance your quality of life. What we also found was that aging well matters. So basically having a pos positive perception of your age positively influences entrepreneurship. And my hunch is that policy could influence this simply by promoting entrepreneurship as a positive career alternative, not only for the young and the dynamic as the dominant discourse in, in the media, let's you assume, but for people of all ages. Thank you very much.